Here we are, Blade fans. Welcome back to this old sword blade reviews and another one of my favorite kind of reviews lately, custom small fixed blades. Ones that you can either carry in your pocket, inside your waistband, under your belt, maybe even around your neck, wherever. Really high performance knives that take up very little real estate. And today, for the first time, I am doing a review on an AB Knives Custom. That is Aaron Bieber. Uh, you may have seen the Model 302 that Bob DeMarco has been uh, showing around his channel because, yeah, he got it for his own at birthday, and I certainly don't blame him. Mine's a little different configuration, but we both have the Tsukamaki wrap on there that Aaron does a magnificent job on, certainly no less than Master Swordsmiths. Look at that. And let's take a look at the knife while we're at it. We've got a beautiful uh, carbon fiber finished Kydex sheath with a belt loop for horizontal carry. Ah, there we go. These, uh, when you take knives out of Kydex that, and they've got a Tsukamaki wrap, it's a little extra effort because the Kydex is molded around these twists and knots here and they form very deeply into the kydex. So uh, I believe it's going to free up a little over time. I'm not too worried about it. It makes the knife a bit more secure. So here we are, my black background, and I'm basically a black knife, but I'm going to try to uh, angle it so that you uh, can see what it is I'm talking about with this. First of all, uh, right over here, we have Aaron's AB Knives logo. That may be a little hard to see, but we'll try to get some light on that. There we go. There you go. This is his deep finish, okay? So I have it written down here in an Instagram uh, chat that he and I had. and Also had a talk with him. Uh, this was before I ordered the knife, and he is uh, full of information and very happy to talk to and work with his customers. Um, so this deep finish is done by etching it with ferric after he creates the finish. All right. And so it ends up being a dark gray when you get it. I'm going to back out a little bit here, get a better focus. There we go. So um, you may be able to see that pebbled looking finish. So that is his deep finish, but he finishes it up with the ferric, uh, I believe it's ferric oxide. Uh, he just calls it ferric. And then on his own, he gives a coating of Ren Wax. And I don't know if he Ren Waxed this because it's Magna Cut and therefore stainless. Uh, but he's talking about carrying one around that's in, uh, I think, uh, 80, the 800 series there. CR, I don't know the, uh, the name of it. <laughs> uh, anyway. This one's in Magna Cut, and I can pronounce Magna Cut and remember it. So what we've got here is the Tsukamaki wrap. And before you say he's epoxied it, he says he uses something else. And it's probably proprietary, but it is not epoxy. But he said it works better. And you can see a little bit of sheen from it there. Basically, it locks the Tsukamaki fabric wrap onto itself and onto the knife. And there is black ray skin underneath natural materials there on the handle uh aaron's shop is in pennsylvania this is a custom-made knife it is usa made 100 percent he does the work himself including the wrapping and let's talk a little bit about the size and the ergonomics so it is a little over a three inch blade we're going to measure it up completely in a minute it is so comfortable in the hand. You know, I heard Bob raving over his a little before I got this one. And of course, uh, he is the reason I got this one. <laughs> um, locks right in the hand and your fingers will always find their way between these um, voids in the wrap where the knots, where it twists and there's spaces. Doesn't matter which hand, left or right, equally comfortable. 
Uh, there is nothing on the handle that's forcing you to hold it a certain way. There's a single, a single finger groove, which kind of blends out into the blade. And there we've got the very heel of the blade not sharpened. And it picks up just shortly after that, which is a good thing because when only the blade is creating the guard for you, uh, you don't want to nick your finger if you move ever so slightly forward. How about Picall Grip? Oh, are we in luck? And we're actually more than in luck. We're in paradise with this Picall Grip. It just locks right in. The handle is the perfect length. I was a little worried. Smallish knife. I said, is it going to fit my medium large hand? Again, I don't have big bear paws. I don't have extra large hands, but I wear a large to extra large glove, so I'll put it that way. I'm about four to four and a half inches across the fingers, and it's perfect. A little bit of the pommel sticking out. So for those of you that don't like extra pommel, it's fine. For those of you that don't like too short a handle, it's also fine. And uh, who can argue with the uh, materials? Beautiful traditional material on the handle and modern stainless steel magna cut let's talk about that magna cut for a minute he got back to me after i bought the knife and without me asking aaron did and said this is hardened to 63 to 64. did your jaws all just drop no it's not 59 to 60. it is 63 to 64 ladies and gentlemen making full use, and I think it's 62 and a half uh, that uh, Laren says is the sweet spot, but uh, some say more, some say less. Hey, we, we're all weekend metallurgists here, right? <laughs> I don't know a damn thing about metals and uh, hardening them. All I know is that a harder steel is going to give you a longer lasting edge and potentially a sharper edge when it's properly sharpened the first time around. Question being, is this properly sharpened the first time around? Okay, well, I really don't know, right? Or maybe do I? Piercing, no problem. Cutting, oh, come on now, don't blow it, Dave. There we go. <laughs> when the uh, paper rolls over, when you try to cut it, you're going to foil yourself. But look at that. Now we're doing it. Now we're doing it. All right. <laughs> I'm going to deem this very sharp, regardless of what my uh, on-camera performance was here. So, yes, it is beyond sharp of in my needs. It's an EDC. It's got a high grind. It's got a nasty point that is right where you want it to be. You have almost like a pistol grip on this. You can see that the... Um, general shape of the knife right along the center line is arched slightly. So for those that like the saber grip, when you thrust, it's going straight in. For those that like the hammer grip, it's slightly down, okay? So you may need to adjust a little bit to get the blade to be um, at a 90 degree to your forearm as I often like, okay? And I'll show you another knife that does that for me. Uh, that certainly doesn't write this out of the equation but let's bring out the tape and we're going to call it seven and an seven and an eighth okay i'll put the decimals on that when it shows up on the screen uh three and a half inches to the handle and exactly three inches on the edge so we've got more blade than we've got edge that's not unusual and in inches, let's start with the handle. I want to find a common average spot, 0.65. Before you say that's too wide, it ain't at all because it tapers. It is very well formed to the hand. That's at the highest point where the knots are. And let's grab the blade. 
right there, 0.14. So we've got some pretty good blade stock, 3.7 millimeters. And get all the white debris off the table. Just the knife. Only 3.62, going to call it 3.63 ounces. 3.63 with the sheath. 4.76 to be exact as we can. Those are the vitals. Yes, he does give you a beautiful tunnel there to push off with. You've got to get a good grip and give it a good push to get it off because as I mentioned, it is formed to the kydex. You can see the, uh, the profile here, see those double bumps. So where we have the knot on the left side, where we have the crossover on the right and that gap, all of that is um, up there within the sheath. Let's see if I can show you. So to about, you can see that it locks into the sheath up to maybe three quarters of the inch of an inch. And, and that's a cool thing because you don't need to swallow more of the handle up in order to get the uh, blade stabilized in there. You can rely on those knots. So they're these own, their own little detents. Okay. So there is the beautiful murdered out 302, model 302 is what we're talking about here again. In the same category size-wise is the Carl Jr. by Auxiliary Manufacturing. A little smaller, not as tall, slightly shorter, but just about the same length. She's a three-inch blade exactly versus three and a half on the 302. And here is the larger version. Yes, loved it that much of the Carl. This is the Carl Sr., <laughs> Carl Jr. And um, if we put Carl in there, he's a good deal bigger. He's a full size, medium size knife. Uh, a good inch and three quarters, inch and a half longer overall with a blade. About a half inch longer, thereabouts, because it's a four inch blade. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fat carbon fiber on this and magna cut and some fancy stone jimping on the top, as well as crazy stone texture on the handle. Just love the work of uh, Michael over there at Auxiliary. Here is one of my all-time favorite ergonomic fixed blade knives. This is the Bastinelli Foreigner. Came out in 2000, 2023, and it is an extremely flat handle. And um, we're talking slim here. So let's see if I get it off of millimeters. Yeah, we're talking uh, like a 0 0.40 thinness on this one. And normally it would feel too skinny in the hand, but because of all of this crazy sculpting here in the handle and this swale for your three fingers and the indexing in the uh, finger groove there for the uh, index finger and this beautiful thumb ramp, you can see that this one actually squares up if I want it to. Got to go out again, huh? So you can see this one squares up a little better, but still great in the saber, the angular cross palm grip, okay? Similar to the 302. So it's got that same kind of drop. So if we get the axis running straight across here from mid-handle to the point, which I think is a fair thing to do, mid-handle to the point, you can see we've got a little more drop and then we've got the angle of the edge coming up on the foreigner, but still we've got this rounded clip here. Got a straight clip here. While we're talking clips, you can't 
see it all that prominently. You can see it better on the satin finished uh, version of the 302. This is actually hollowed a little bit. All right. That swedge is hollowed. A beautiful touch. Doesn't need to be, but that is just a beautiful touch. Here you can see that finish on there. This is supposed to wear in over time and look really, really cool. So as that nitrided finish breaks down, if I'm expressing that correctly, um, it's going to look a little different. And it's not hopefully going to rust because it's magna cut. And uh, what else have we got here? Well, we've got the T-Kel Nighthawk. Can't do a show about small fixed blades without talking about the Nighthawk. And there is Mr. Nighthawk with the ring. Now, if we exclude the ring and just go to there, through the same length. If I go and include the ring, it's about an inch longer. And this is the Tonto version. There is, I believe, a drop point version as well. Beautiful knife. Look at that burl. Um, what Tim calls his uh, burl G10, multi-layered screws holding everything together there. You can remove these scales. He's doing a lot of very innovative things. And uh, finally, Osorako Zukuri by Chris Williams. This one's in Sleepner Steel, made by Lion Steel. And it is also one of my most favorite small pocketable knives. About quarter to a half inch longer overall. It's a three and a half incher, so um, yeah, it's just a little bit longer. Let's take a look at that sheath one more time. Very easy to switch this loop out if you don't like it for something like a DCC clip, although I don't think this is properly a DCC clip, but it's close enough to it to be one. So we've got an end grommet. We've got one, two, three grommets here. So um, given the spacing on the first two, that's going to be a match, okay, for a DCC or a ulti clip. Well, I have to say, it's been a great doing business with Aaron. And if you're interested, I'll make sure you have the link to both his Instagram as well as, uh, I'm not sure he has a web presence, but certainly if he does, I'll make sure that you have that info as well. One last look. Beautiful, beautiful, wicked little fixed blade knife. Again, utility, EDC, and tactical, certainly. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe. I'll be back soon.